By my count, Minecraft currently has 38 enemy mobs. If we exclude most tools and armor sets, these mobs drop 50 different items. If we exclude any items which are otherwise easily obtainable without hostile mobs, we're left with 24 items that are either unobtainable, non-renewable, or at least a lot more difficult to get if you're playing in peaceful difficulty. In this video I want to make a Minecraft mod to make all these things available in peaceful difficulty as of Minecraft version 1.21.5. This isn't a super original idea, I remember seeing a mod do this in like 2010, but it's an idea that certainly stuck with me. It feels almost like an oversight to me that Peaceful Difficulty exists with so much content unavailable in it. So since I want to force myself to actually finish making a Minecraft mod for once, I'm going to run with this idea and make it into a YouTube video to hold myself accountable. The most obvious mob drop to start with is Gunpowder, which is dropped by Creepers. In real life, this is made of sulfur, charcoal, and potassium nitrate. Charcoal is already in the game, so I can skip that. To get sulfur, I'm adding brimstone ore to the nether. When making this mod, I want to keep in mind the guidelines in the Mojang Minecraft design book, such as items should have multiple uses. For that, I'm going to make sure that sulfur has a decorative block, and I also made it craftable into yellow dye, so it's not entirely one note. Next gunpowder ingredient is potassium nitrate. This could also be an ore, but that's boring, so instead I'm going to add guano, which is dropped by bats, which is a source of potassium nitrate in real life, albeit used for fertilizer and not for gunpowder. With that in mind, it will be compostable to make bone meal, which can then fertilize crops. And I'll also make it into a dye. I found this one source claiming that it was used historically in purple dye, which I can't find a secondary source for, but that sounds a lot more interesting than, say, brown or gray dye, which is what I was going to do at first, so I'm going to go with purple. So bats are somewhat infamously just ambient mobs that don't really do anything. Since I'm making them drop an item, I'm also going to make them breedable using watermelon, and you can now move them around with leashes. This way you can actually set up a bat farm to automate guano production. I'm also making it so that killing them will drop bat wings. We'll come back to that later. Gunpowder is now done. Next up, let's look at spiders. They drop string and spider eyes. String, I'm going to go the easy way out. A billion mods have already done this. I'm just making it a plant. Here I have flax, which spawns randomly in the overworld, not limited by the regular requirement of growing on farmland. You can eat the seeds, so that's two uses already, and it grows to be two blocks tall because why not? I remember seeing a tutorial on doing that years ago when I first tried and failed to make a Minecraft mod, and now that I actually know how to program I thought it would be fun to revisit that concept. Speaking of tutorials however, I am definitely using some for reference, so I'll link all the resources I've consulted in the description. For spider eyes, the only natural way of providing these I could think of was to add a friendly version of a spider, but I don't want this mod to just be friendly versions of hostile mobs. So I'm going to go with a level 1 cleric villager trade instead. Now slime balls are actually farmable and peaceful because baby pandas can rarely drop slime when they sneeze, uh, which is also a rare event. There's something like a 1 in 6,000 chance of a panda sneezing each tick, and the game runs at 20 ticks per second, so that's on average a sneeze once every 5 minutes. Then there's a 1 in 700 chance of getting a slime ball out of that, which, which uh, ends up being uh, two days. <laughs> Assuming I did the math right, it's, it's, it's two days. Although now according to the wiki, the good one, not the bad one, based on the panda's genes, this could instead be one every five hours, which, uh, okay, that, that's a bit better, but look, I, I just got four slime balls in 10 seconds, so. To ameliorate that, and to avoid the part in peaceful slime farming where you have to murder all the adult pandas, I'm making it so using a feather on a panda even an adult makes it sneeze with a 1 in 3 chance of making it drop slime. So in that original Peaceful Plus mod from 2010, they had fossils as an ore, and for whatever reason, that, that fact makes me feel really nostalgic. So I'm doing that as well to add a source of bones. And yes, this, this is not how fossils work. Um, they're rocks. But again, it's nostalgia, so I gotta do it. So as a part of this, I was going to add a recipe for saddles, since ravagers drop saddles, therefore making it a hostile mob drop in my eyes. I put slime balls in the recipe, since that matches how leads are made, and both involve sort of sticking to mobs, so it felt appropriate. 
And then Mojang announced that in the next update, they're making leads require only string and no slime. And then they also announced that they're just adding a saddle recipe. Um, well, that update's not out yet, so I'm leaving this in. Okay, so the most important mob drop in the game is, uh, without a doubt, blaze rods. Without these, there are no potions. There's no end portal, meaning one out of three dimensions is just gone, along with the best movement mechanic in the game, the elytra. It feels only right to pair up the most important mob drop in the game with the most important and most useful, most beloved passive mob in the game, the sniffer. Okay, so that's obviously a joke, but in the defense of sniffers, I, I will say I like them. I think they're funny, they look weird, you can put them in a zoo, but I admit uh, they don't really do much. Okay, you get two plants out of them. Good job on that one, Mojang. You followed your rule of at least two uses for things. I, I see you. But the plants on offer are kind of underwhelming. So why not just add more weird plants? I've made it so sniffers can now dig up blaze coral from soul soil. These grow like sea pickles. They emit light and can be smelted down into blaze rods. And to give them a secondary use, I also made them craftable into dye. But why stop there? I can get a lot of the more niche mob drops out of the way with sniffers. Let's say they can dig in sand to get prismarine crystals and shards, which are dropped by guardians normally. Technically, you can break blocks in temples to get them, but that's not a renewable source. I also have them able to rarely dig up nautilus shells, which are dropped by drowned normally. And I've also given them a very small chance, one in a hundred, of digging up a trident, which again, is dropped by a drowned. I've also made it so they can dig up flint from gravel, because why not? Yes, you can get flint and feathers and sticks and make arrows and peaceful, but who would ever craft those when you can just automate a skeleton farm? So by doing this, arrows can also be a renewable resource and peaceful, like they are in the harder difficulties. This crosses a bunch of mob drops off our list. So now we can get to the end, meaning we can get elytra, which means we obviously need phantom membranes so we can repair them. Because I've never heard of a mending enchantment. Anyway, this is when we bring back the bat wings from before. Let's say bat wing plus something phantomy, a gas tier, gives you a phantom membrane. And again, to make sure that bat wings have multiple uses, I'll also throw in a leather recipe like rabbit hide has. Anyway, speaking of the gas tiers, uh, my idea here was just to make a friendly version of the ghast. Okay, I literally said before I wouldn't do that for spiders, but whatever, I get one friendly version of a hostile mob, okay? So they're smaller than ghasts. I've based them off the Alay and Vex, since this was the first mob I had ever made. I wanted to reuse an existing model to make it a bit easier for myself, and I named them Ghastlings. We know where this is going because literally a week after I had implemented them into the mod, Minecraft Live announced the next content drop would add a friendly baby ghast called a Ghastling. Also, ignore how late this video is coming out. It, it, it took me a while to edit, okay? Yeah, so these are, uh, these are wisps, and you can breed them with brimstone, so that's like use three on brimstone. Wisps spawn only in nether fortresses, and you can feed them guano to make them cry. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd cry too if that happened to me. Okay, so this item frankly doesn't deserve to be on the list, because as all speedrunners know, you can just get ender pearls from piglin bartering. And somehow, piglins are considered passive enough to remain in peaceful difficulty just with their aggression disabled, while at the same time the actual peaceful unless you hit them first zombie piglins get despawned. Sure thing, Mojang. Anyway though, it feels wrong to not be able to get ender pearls when you're actually in the end dimension, so for that I made ender clams. They spawn in warped forests, and in the end, they can contain ender pearls or other assorted, vaguely circular nether items like brimstone and gold nuggets. They warp away when attacked and can pick up any item you throw at them, much like foxes can in the overworld. I designed them after shulkers. At first I thought about having them drop shulker shells, but it turns out that shulkers, much like piglins, actually spawn in peaceful but stay passive. So I'll leave shulker shells alone since making that available in the nether would defeat half the purpose of going to the end. Let's quickly run down some more missing items. Frogs can eat magma cubes in the nether, and this drops one of three different frog lights, depending on the type of frog that did it. 
Uh, now that in the mod we can just craft magma cream using slime from pandas and blaze rods from blaze coral, I've just made it so that frogs can also eat magma cream, but only when they're in the nether, and then this drops frog lights. Next, if you have a charged creeper blow up a creeper, a zombie, a piglin, or a skeleton, it'll drop their head as a decorative item. Uh, that'll just be another cleric villager trade like the spider eyes. I've left out skeleton heads from that list of trades. I'm adding that to the sniffer soul soil loot pool along with wither skeleton skulls. Another creeper interaction, much like dropping mob heads, is that having a skeleton kill a creeper drops a random music disc. To bring this over to Peaceful, I made a new villager job type, the musician, with a jukebox as their workstation. I'm sort of going for an Elvis pompadour and leather jacket look here. It's, it's a bit anachronistic, but oh well. They sell all the creeper obtainable music discs, so there's still some that can only be looted from chests, and so that the implementation feels a bit more fleshed out, they also sell note blocks, different goat horns, jukeboxes, bells, and then they buy strings and paper. Let's touch on what is a bit of a quirk in peaceful difficulty. Uh, you can't eat. You know how you automatically heal at max speed in peaceful? That's not a specifically programmed method for replenishing health, that's actually just because peaceful forces you to be at max hunger saturation at all times. Anyway, it seems a bit weird to me. When I think of peaceful, I think of building a nice little house and setting up a farm with no hostile mobs to worry about, and that whole vibe is lessened a bit by the fact that you can't eat any of your produce. So I just made it that hunger still ticks down without affecting your healing rate in peaceful. I don't let it go less than five hunger bars, so it'll never negatively affect your ability to run, and it'll never cause you to start starving. Literally this does nothing at all, it just allows you to eat food in a purely cosmetic way. The mobs I've saved for last are the three quote-unquote boss mobs. The Ender Dragon, the Wither, and the Elder Guardian. The Elder Guardian is a bit of an odd one out here, but I think it's still fitting as at least a mini-boss. The Warden also comes to mind, but it doesn't drop anything good since it's meant to be avoided and not killed, so there'd be no point considering it here. I went back and forth on just adding some intense crafting recipes for the drops, like requiring a bunch of diamond blocks, but it feels like a cop-out to take what is meant to be a combat challenge and make it so straightforward, so I wanted to add a bit more to that. So instead of requiring combat, I'll have it require a bit of exploration. I've created these underground dungeon temple structures that spawn in with a new crafting block at the center, the effigy altar. These cannot be crafted, and therefore must be found. I am, however, reminded of another line from the Minecraft design book, which says that finding things is fun, but searching for them is not. To that end, I've added a cartography villager trade for a map that leads you to an effigy altar, so you can either stumble upon them randomly or actively seek them out. The altar has seven crafting slots, plus an extra one that takes brimstone, sort of based on how enchanting tables require lapis. With it, you can craft a dragon effigy using bat wings, ender eyes, and obsidian, a wither effigy using skulls and soul sand, an elder effigy out of a bunch of fish, and lastly, you can craft a totem of undying, which is probably pretty useless in peaceful difficulty, but hey, I want it to be thorough, and that takes gold and emeralds. With the three boss effigies, when you use it, it acts as if you had killed that boss, so it'll give you XP, the Wither one will give you a Nether Star, the Guardian one will give you a Sponge or Tide Armor Trim or any of the other drops, and the Dragon one creates a new End Island portal. Speaking of the End, I have to do some extra work on that since it's inaccessible in normal peaceful difficulty. Uh, the Dragon just attacks you <laughs> if you manage to get in, so I have to make it spawn and despawn when the difficulty level changes. However, this would also mean that entering the End in peaceful without a Dragon Effigy just sort of strands you there forever, or well, strands you there until you jump into the void and die. And that's because you have to defeat the ender dragon to actually open the exit portal. So I just went with the easy way out and had the portal open automatically if you're in peaceful. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Um, I forgot the trials update. Uh, let's say wandering villager trade gives you trial keys. And uh, sniffer digging in gravel can get you breeze coral, which lets you make breeze rods. Uh, and then there was the creaking, 
Um, for that, we'll say that stripping a pale oak log also gives you some resin. So now it's a renewable resource. And uh, I think that covers the more recent updates, except now there was the 1.21.5 drop that came out when I was in the middle of this, which updated spawn eggs. So I had to go and update my textures for those. And yeah, I see why people just make mods for old versions of the game so they can just ignore the never ending updates. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you want to play the mod yourself, it's linked below. If you've been inspired to learn how to mod yourself, I've linked all the resources I consulted as well as my own mod code in the description. Uh, let me know in the comments if I should do any more Minecraft modding videos. I don't really have much Minecraft content on the channel, but I have some ideas for some more modded Minecraft content that I might try out in the future. Big thanks to Mega Piggy, who the second I made my GitHub repo public, introduced a bunch of nice quality of life features to the mod and fixed some bugs which I had overlooked and that was all very nice, so thanks again. Um, okay, bye. Oh yeah, so I didn't add a way to get rotten flesh because that, that item's literally useless, but I guess I guess that makes me a fraud. I guess the mod's unplayable if I don't put it, so I'll just do um, meat plus brimstone equals rotten flesh. Okay, there. I don't, I don't know why anyone would want that, but uh, cool, it's available.